Hi guys, this is Miss Gold. Today's lesson is Module 3, Lesson 13, Unknown Area Problems on the Coordinate Plane. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students find the areas of triangles and simple polygonal regions in the coordinate plane with vertices at grid points by composing into rectangles and decomposing into triangles and quadrilaterals. Let's start with the first example, the area of a parallelogram. The coordinate plane below contains figure P, parallelogram A, B, C, D. Part A says write the ordered pairs of each of the vertices next to the vertex points. Now, if you're not familiar with the language in this, first they mention a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So here we know that BC is parallel to AD, AB is parallel to DC. The parallelogram contains vertex points that are labeled with the vertices A, B, C, and D. So we're first asked to write the ordered pairs of each of these vertices. So let's go through and label. First, we find A is at the coordinate point negative 3, negative 4. B is at the coordinate point 0, 2. C is at the coordinate point 5, 2. And finally, D is at the coordinate point 2, negative 4. Part B says draw a rectangle surrounding figure P that has vertex points of A and C. So our rectangle has to have right angles in it, and it is also a quadrilateral. And so basically a rectangle is a parallelogram with right angles. Now it's stated in part B that I have to have vertex points of A and C in my rectangle. So I know one corner of my rectangle is going to be point A, and I know the other corner is going to be point C. So when I do that, it creates two new points that are not on my parallelogram. And so we were told to label the two triangles in the figure as S and T. So this could be triangle S, and this can be triangle T. Then we're asked to find the area of the rectangle. Now this part becomes simple because what we can do is simply count the length and the width because we know the area of a rectangle is equal to base times height or sometimes we like to refer to it as length times width, whichever one you're comfortable with. So the base of my rectangle here has a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the entire length here is eight units, and a height of one, two, three, four, five, six. So here this becomes eight times six, and we know six times eight is 48. And this is in units because it is on the coordinate plane. It's an area, so it's also units squared. Part D says find the area of each triangle. So we need to know the formula for area of a triangle. And we know that we can find this on our reference sheet. And there's a couple different ways to write this. You may see it as 1 half base times height. And an equivalent way to write this is base times height divided by 2. Again, whichever way you're comfortable with using. So we need to know the base and the height of each triangle. So here, the base, we can count, is one, two, three units across, and has a height, which would be the same as our rectangle here, of six. So let's go ahead and fill those in. Base of three, height of six, divide by two. So six times three is going to give us 18. Divided by two, leaves us with an area of 9 for each triangle. And this is 9 units squared. Now if you weren't sure that each of the triangles were the same, let's go back and take a look at the base and height of triangle S. So notice the base here has a length of one, two, three, and also a height of six, so we get the same area for both S and T. 
Part E says use these areas to find the area of parallelogram A, B, C, D. So what I want you to notice here is we now know the area of the entire rectangle we created. We know the area of each triangle we created. So if we take the area of the rectangle and take out the area of the two triangles, we'd be left with parallelogram P. So let's just write our plan of attack first. The area of the parallelogram P, so notice I'm using a subscript there of P to identify that the area we're talking about is in fact the area of parallelogram P, is equal to our entire area of our rectangle, so we'll call this A sub R, meaning the area of the rectangle, take away the area of triangle S minus the area of triangle T. So this is my game plan for isolating parallelogram P from our figure. So I can just fill in these pieces. Area of rectangle, we found to be 48. Area of the triangles, we're each nine. So when we take 48, subtract nine, and then subtract another nine, we're left with 30 units squared. Let's look at a similar figure here. The coordinate plane below contains figure R, a rectangle with the same base as the parallelogram we saw in the first example. Part F says draw a rectangle S and T next to R so you have a rectangle that is the same size as the one you created on the first coordinate plane. So what I'm gonna do here is take S and T, which we knew had a base of three. So we're gonna go over three units, one, two, three, and it had a height of six, so I'm gonna go up six units. Bringing this one over, you can see that the tr two triangles are created using this diagonal here. So this could be triangle S and this would be triangle T. And you can see if you look back that those are similar to the ones that we saw in our first example. And I did follow the directions because I have now created a rectangle that's this, that is the same size as the one we created on the first coordinate plane. So what you'll notice is if we count this up, this has a length of eight and a height of six. And we're asked to find the area of rectangle R. Now within this figure, we can count, because it's on a coordinate plane, the length and width of rectangle R. So the area of rectangle R is going to be found simply by doing length times width. So here, our base, or our length, has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we already know that the height is 6. So if we multiply these two, 5 times 6 gives us 30 units squared. Part H says, what do figures R and P have in common? So if we look back to the conclusions we found on the first example, we found that parallelogram P had an area of 30 units squared, and our rectangle that has the same height and base as our parallelogram has the same area as well. So really, what we should notice here is they have the same base, height, and area. Taking this one step further, what we can conclude from this whole scenario is that the formula for area of a rectangle and area of a parallelogram are actually the same formula. So in conclusion, we can see that the formula for area of a parallelogram is the same formula we use for area of a rectangle, which is base times height. Um, some other relevant formulas that you're going to need in the next couple of lessons are the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height, the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. We've already talked about that one. And finally, the area of a trapezoid. So if you're not sure, let me just draw you a quick sketch of a trapezoid. So in this figure, we have a height 
H. The top base is called B1 and the bottom base is called B2. So for this formula, we are going to take one half times the base one plus base two times the height. Another way to write this is one half H times B sub one plus B sub two. And most or all of these formulas are available on your reference sheets. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure for this entire part of the module, you're going to want to have your reference sheet available so you can access all of the formulas just in case you don't have them memorized, but it'll also get you prepared to always look at your reference sheet when you're doing these types of questions on your state assessment.